participate in society. I mean, already, what would happen if you decided, I don't want to participate with Google, I'm never going to email anybody that uses Gmail? You would be cut out of the social narrative. You would be unable to correspond with people and function in society in general, I would say. So I would say that the trends have changed. That instead of this original cypherpunk vision, we've gotten something else, where technology starts by actually altering the fabric of society. And that information tends to accumulate in very distinct places as a result of those changes. And that then, the eavesdroppers just move to those points where information is accumulating. So the past was this very direct thing, where you know, governments, eavesdroppers, were trying to actually install surveillance equipment into every piece of consumer electronics, into every telephone, into every fax machine, every, into every computer. And the present is much more subtle. They figured out that that was not a winning strategy. Instead, they just moved to the few points where that information naturally accumulates. Places like room 641A at the AT&T WorldCom facility in San Francisco, where the NSA has been operating a fiber optic splitter for a long time now. The past was direct. You had things like total information awareness, where these scary government programs that were trying to very directly collect and, and accumulate all the information that they could. And the present is a lot more subtle. Instead of things like TIA, you have programs that start by soliciting rather than demanding your involvement. Things like Google, Facebook, Twitter. And so when I think about the future of like the things that I want to start thinking about more, the first thing that I want to do is acknowledge and deal with the choices that aren't really choices. That to recognize that maybe there isn't such a, a large difference between the cell phone in my pocket and the government mandated tracking device that I was so scared of so many years ago. And that once I recognize like how small that difference is, that I can start to see these things in different ways and react accordingly to come up with solutions that, seem, that I think are important. So I think we have to acknowledge that these choices are expanding and that they are, in some ways, becoming demands. So, um, you know, having sort of made this acknowledgement in myself, I've started working on a few projects. Um, and, you know, the first thing I did is start thinking about Google. Um, you know, if I think of Google not as this thing that I'm just choosing to use, but it, in some ways something that is a part of society that I can't remove myself from, then I start thinking about, okay, well, what's, what is the problem, really? Well, the biggest problem is that they just have an awful lot of data, right? They record everything, you know? Uh, they, not just your search requests, not just your IP address, they record your TCP headers. They never throw anything away. Um, they know the contents of every email you've ever sent or received. They know the news you read, the places you go. Now they're collecting GPS location uh, and your DNS lookups, right? So they know who your friends are, they know where you live, they know where you work. They know where you spend your free time. They know about your health, your love life, your political leanings. Um, the thing is that they know not just a lot about what you're doing, but also they have a lot of insight into what you're thinking. Um, and they've done really well at mitigating any criticism along these lines. Um, they're most effectively, what they've done is control this debate by controlling the terms. That people have started to talk a little bit about Google and privacy. And what they've done is said, uh, well, we anonymize your data after nine months. Well, so first of all, they wait nine months. That's a little bit weird. But then what they've done is they've defined, they, they control the word anonymity. What they mean by anonymity is drop the last octet of your IP address. To me, that is not anonymizing, you know? But since they are able to control this word, now, uh, you know, it's, oh, okay, well, they anonymize my data. Um, they have also done things like, say, uh, you know, we're putting the privacy, your privacy under your control by introducing these things like the uh, Google privacy panel and stuff like that. Um, and this is also an interesting move on their part where what they've been able to do is um, display this information, but what they do is only display the information that is most obviously connected to you. They don't show you any of the things that they could very easily correlate to you. And most impo importantly, what they do is require that to participate in their privacy settings, you have to have an account with Google, maintain a cookie, and be logged in at all times. 
So they've co-opted this thing where to care about privacy, you now have to participate in their tracking even more effectively, um, which is kind of a brilliant move on their part. They've slipped up a little bit um, recently. Eric Schmidt said this thing, if there's something you don't want anyone to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place, which is, I think, one of the first big mistakes that they've made. They have an excellent PR department, and uh, they just let this one slip. The other thing is that if there's one thing we've learned from the Aurora attacks is that they were likely about intercept, right? We've learned that uh, from the Aurora attacks that Google is likely running uh, real-time uh, lawful intercept systems uh, on their networks, and that not only do legal eavesdroppers or eavesdroppers with a legal backing have access to these things, but that they're becoming more and more appealing to eavesdroppers without a legal backing. Uh, and that we also know from these attacks that people who were interested in these systems were able to successfully compromise them and access the same information that law enforcement um, is monitoring every day. So, you know, thinking about these problems, um, I started this project called Google Sharing. And basically, the, the premise of Google Sharing is that we want to uh, reduce the scope of the choice that we have to make uh, when participating in Google services. And so, Reducing that scope to me means rejecting this sort of false choice of, well, you can choose or choose not to participate in these things. And so um, what I want is anonymous access to Google that is uh, fast and reliable. And uh, so the Google sharing system aims to uh, provide that. Uh, it's two parts, a Firefox add-on and a custom proxy server. And the way it works is that the add-on sits in your web browser and it watches all of your requests. And your requests just go to the internet uh, directly, totally unmolested, except for requests that would be destined to Google services which don't require a login. So these, these are things like Google Search, Google News, Google Images, Google Groups, uh, Google Shopping, but not things like Google Checkout or Google Mail. And um, so those requests are siphoned off and sent to the Google Sharing Proxy instead of going directly to the internet. And the Google Sharing Proxy maintains a pool of identities. Uh, each identity is basically uh, represented by a cookie that has been issued by Google, as well as some unique HTTP header information. So these are the things that are sort of like the fingerprint for your web browser, right? Like, um, you know, a specific user agent string or a specific set of content encodings. Uh, and it maintains this pool. And as requests come in, they are assigned to arbitrary identities. The information from the requests, uh, the HTTP headers in the requests is stripped off and the information from the identities is put on in their place and forwarded on to Google. Then the responses are forwarded or returned to the Google Sharing Proxy, and uh, those are forwarded back on to the client. Um, so, and then we tried to take it a, a, a sort of a step up by um, encrypting the link between the client and the Google Sharing Proxy. So for things uh, like Google services where you wouldn't ordinarily get SSL protection, like you, you can't use SSL with Google search or Google images and stuff like that, that you do when you're using Google sharing because we uh, use SSL between this link on the, the client and the proxy. So this was sort of an interesting thing for me because when I went to like deploy uh, the Google sharing proxy, I was like, well, I need an SSL certificate. And uh, I've been like publishing uh, attacks on SSL for a little while, but it had been some time since I'd actually just gotten a certificate, you know. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, straight to the bottom, uh, you know, six dollar certificates. And uh, so I went to the website, you know, type in my name. Uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where you have to create an account before you can actually get the certificates. So I go to create the account and I click the button, create account, and it signs me into someone else's account like someone in Turkey or something. I could see other certificates and stuff. And I was like, man, this is like annoying. You know, it's like I'm not even looking for security vulnerabilities. I just want a certificate, you know. And, it, and you know, I'm, all right, well, you know, I'll log out, you know, and I'll try it again, you know, create account. And it logs me into someone else's account. And I'm like, well, I could just keep doing this until I find something interesting. But actually, I don't even care. I just want a real certificate, you know, like, I was like, well, I could issue one from this other guy's account, but you know, then it might get revoked or whatever, you know. Uh, and so, you know, I was like, all right, maybe the, you know, the very bottom was not the best thing. I'll go one step up, you know, the ten dollar certificates or something like that. So, you know, I go to this place, and it's a two part thing. You have to fill out your contact information, and then on the next step, you submit your certificate signing request. So, I fill out the contact information, Moxie Marlin Spike, blah blah blah, you know. Next, 
and it just says, request denied. I was like, well, how's 